Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome into this episode of Chamber Chat Live here on Facebook, for the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce. 2021 Mission and Vision Partners are MVPs. The logos you see in front of you are a list of folks who have financially contributed to the organization and can help provide programming. So we do encourage you to take a look at the logos. If you see one you recognize, please reconnect with them. If you see one that you don't recognize, perhaps you use their services or connect with them in some regard. But those are our 2021 Mission and Vision Partners, our MVPs. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bill Vitiello. I am the Director of Institutional Relationships and Marketing for the Victory Bank in Limerick. It, so glad you could join us today. I'm sure you're not doing anything else like traveling. <laughs> you know, it's pretty obvious of what's happening here. So uh, without further ado, I'll bring in our weather correspondent, Eileen Daltrick. Eileen, <laughs> Eileen, what's happening out there today? It's snowing here in Pottstown, Bill. Okay, thank you so much for your report. And our guest today, no, I'm just teasing. Yeah, another snow day. It's it's crazy. And it, uh, we were talking before we came on air here. It's really, uh, it was coming down for quite a while. It seems like it li might be lightening up a little bit, but still yet another snow yes. day. Yes, agreed. So, and we, we came into the office today, so we are here at the office. So hopefully everybody can make it home safely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so you uh, you have the president's desk, you have the floor, so it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, welcome again, everyone. Great to see everybody. Hope you're having a great afternoon. I just wanted to take a moment and talk about a couple of programs that we've started since COVID uh, started with all of us almost a year ago. And again, the chamber is really focusing on relationships, uh, as we always have, but we're really even putting that as more of a focus this year. And two of the things that we started were our REACH coffee chat group and a CEO roundtable. And those are two separate groups. Uh, CEO roundtable meets every other Thursday from 8.30 to 9.30. It is open to only CEO levels, uh, small business owners, uh, or again, that CEO person in a larger organization. And we really just meet to kind of support each other we are in the process of redesigning that program a little bit, uh, but we are recruiting right now if we do have any other interested individuals out there that would like to join, we would welcome some additional participation. And the other group is our REACH Coffee Chat. REACH is our Empowering and Connecting Women group, and that group meets every other Tuesday morning from 10 to 11. And we just had an article uh, written uh, and was uh, shared on the post uh, about our program and our group. We've had some great testimonials from the women that participate. So just another opportunity for relationship building. That group has actually led to some individuals doing business together, which is what we ultimately hope for. So uh, if you'd have an interest in either one of those programs, please let me know and we'll be happy to get you connected. We are obviously meeting via Zoom right now for both, uh, but doing well. Uh, on that platform with both of these programs. So would love to have some additional participation. And that's it for today. <laughs> was is, was that your official sign off or? <laughs> no, I'm supposed to. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Signing now, off. Signing off. Now I did see the article in the post. I thought that was yes. great. I was reading it, it said Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I know those, you know those people. Uh, no, but good for you. And um, you know, Reach is a great program. And like you said, you know, it, it winds up um, evolving into long-lasting friendships, business contacts. You know, perhaps you even do business with somebody that you meet there. So it's a, it's a really good opportunity to to network together. And I do hope folks will um, take the opportunity to attend. So we do too. Again, it's you know it very welcoming both groups as new people have uh, signed on and wanted to participate we've welcomed them into the group and the group basically you know is treats those people as if they've been part of it since last march you know when we started um so it's just uh, both groups have been really great that way and very supportive of everybody in the group that's that's awesome before you go would you like to give us a traffic report as well 
I mean, let's just go full package here. It really isn't. <laughs> let's just go full package. From my window, I can see Hanover Street, and okay. it, uh, it's kind of empty right now. So okay, all right. So and we sports. You're going to have to do yourself. <laughs> yes. Sport. Not my forte. <laughs> Flyers lost last night, seven to three. I think it was seven to two. Yes, seven I did three. see that on the news. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, so. but beautiful setting there. Um, all right, so we did weather, we did traffic, we did sports. <laughs> I guess lifestyle is next, maybe. <laughs> yeah, let's bring. I will make one other comment. I'm going to talk about it on a future show. Um, we are also recruiting for leadership Tri County, so I just want to put that teaser out to people. Uh, if you want to give it, um, try and find some information on it. It's a great program, and I want to give it some more attention on a future show because it really does deserve it. Uh, but want people to know that we're going to have a class start in September. We weren't able to do a class this past year, uh, obviously with the situation as it was, but we look forward to kicking that off again in September. That's great. And I think when you're saying it's a great program, I honestly think you're underselling it a little bit. Uh, it's a phenomenal program and can't wait to hear you discuss more about it with the community next time you're on. So great. looking forward to it. All right. Thank you, Eileen, from the president's desk. She's <laughs> signing off. And now on to our lifestyle segment. <laughs> I don't know. We're just trying to keep it loose here at the chamber, you know, and we another are. snow day, <laughs> pandemic. You just got to keep it loose. So that's right. We hope love you guys it. are. Yeah. Hope See you guys ya. are enjoying. Uh, so our next guest here, um, if you would uh, be kind enough to bring him on, Drew. Uh, please help me welcome Eric Fry. Eric is from Dishel, Bartle, and Dooley. Eric, welcome to the Chamber Chat. Thanks for having me. How's it going? It's good. I'm, I'm pots down as well, so the, I'm, I'm watching the snow come down just like the two of you. Okay, nice. Is that back? What's that background there that you have? Is that pots down? It's <laughs> actually Philadelphia. It's historic Philadelphia. It's a mural okay. in one of our conference rooms uh, dating back to probably the 1800s or earlier than that. Nice. I like it. I like mm -hmm. it. Uh, so, Eric, so for folks who aren't familiar uh, with uh, Dishel Bartle and Dooley, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, please describe who you are. Thank you. It's it's uh, you were close. It's Dishel Bartle and Dooley. But um, uh, it, so it's a it's a, a law firm uh, based out of Lansdale. Originally, um, we've uh, started. So that's this kind of north central uh, Montgomery County. And we've been trying to push our way out uh, to the. Uh, Western uh, uh, area, Montgomery County and Berks County, Chester County. I'm actually originally from Lancaster County. Um, so we have 14 attorneys uh, total. Um, we have an office in Boyertown uh, and then uh, have this office here in uh, Pottstown where I am right now. Um, uh, people in Pottstown might know uh, of Ed Scapala. Um, he practiced here for like 40 years. And what we did is we merged with Ed's firm uh, and then took over his office here on King Street uh, in uh, in Pottstown. That's great. And how long have you guys have been around uh, total? So the law firm in Lansdale started in 1977 and then in Pottstown probably for four years since we merged with Ed. Yeah, that's a that's a long time. Um, yeah. I'm actually from the Lansdale area and, re and recall you guys. Um, yeah. from being uh, back that way. It's a great area. Um, yeah. if folks from Pottstown never get a chance to, or hopefully we'll get a chance to get in there. Um, yeah. So I was looking at your website, just like Drew was kind of scrolling through here and you, you yeah. do have a very robust team, um, a number of disciplines. Can you kind of review the sure. different areas that you practice law there, please? Sure. Right, right there's the list. So um, it, it really, uh, we, we look at ourselves as, as 14 attorneys who uh, as lawyers, we're not allowed to say we're experts, um, but we we all specialize in a uh, in various areas. Uh, so that if you call or if you deal with one of us, you can actually jump around. And if you have another issue pop up for you, we we hope we become your law firm for everything. Um, so we really we have a family law uh, practice, um, a litigation. Uh, there's John Young right there is a is a one of our litigators who does personal injury or workers comp. Uh, social security, uh, civil, you know, litigation. Um, he does employment law. Uh, so he kind of does anything in the uh, litigation world. Um, family law is, is, uh, you know, everyone knows it's divorces. It's, it's, uh, um, it's also, you know, custody battles and, uh, the good side of it is, is adoptions and things like that as well. Um, and then we have a criminal, uh, uh, lawyers as well. Um, and then uh, real estate, uh, business, estate planning, 
uh, municipal law. And I mentioned those last four, uh, uh, I put them at the end because that's, that's really where I practice most of, uh, most of what I do on a daily basis. Okay. So where, where are you guys busiest right now? What discipline do you feel like uh, is most active? It's the, they all are actually <laughs> across the board. So, uh, you know, real estate, you know, it's, it slowed down last spring uh, only because you weren't allowed to do any transactions in April at all. You probably saw that in the banking side as well. Mm -hmm. um, but then it came back with a flurry. It, it, it didn't slow it down. It just delayed it. You know, people who wanted to buy and people who wanted to sell still wanted to buy and sell. So they, uh, you know, we, we skipped April and then it, it caught up through the rest of the year. Uh, family law's busy. Uh, I think it's actually picked up uh, since people started getting back. And who knows if that's because of spending too much time together because of COVID or, 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 or just uh, you know wanting to get away. Who knows what it is? Um, uh, litigation's always busy. Uh, um, and then you know estate planning. Again, COVID. You know it brought some people out. You know that otherwise wouldn't even have thought to start planning. Uh, younger people and they're planning ahead now, which is what they should be doing. And that's great. So uh, speaking of that real quick, if we could maybe give some suggestions to our younger audience, when, when do you begin planning for your estate? When's yeah. the time you start having that conversation? Yeah, if, if, if you're like me and graduating uh, college or law school or something like that, and you have all debt, who, who cares, right? <laughs> Anyone can take right. your debt. Um, but uh, um, really, once you start uh, earning money, getting assets, once you have a family, obviously uh, you should have that because you want to you want to dictate who's guardian of your children and who who uh, who handles the money for your children and things like that. So the only way to do that is really have a will and, and designate who those people are. Um, so assets, children. As soon as you buy a house, uh, if you're married, you want to you probably want to have one. Any and any of those life changing events. Uh, but really, once you start earning an income, you you probably want to have a will. And there's actually three documents we recommend. Um, to have well, one is the will. Everyone knows that takes over when when you die. It kind of dictates uh, how your estate's supposed to be handled. You should have a power of attorney, which is for when you're alive. That if something happens to you, that somebody can sign your name to financial documents. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the healthcare power of attorney and living will, which is the same thing as a power of attorney, but it's for your uh, medical needs and things like that. And basically, if you want uh, you know the plug to be pulled or do you want to be kept alive, sort of thing. So. Yeah, I know. I recently went through the process of the last two years or so, and it's a necessary step. It's you know yeah. nobody likes to think about passing yeah. away or right, you know, yeah. leaving, leaving it, loved ones. Yeah. I explained it to a lot of clients. It's it's uh, um, it's the process takes about two weeks. From usually, I meet with a client for a half hour. We we figure out what they want to do. I write and get it off to them, and and then it's, they and then they review it and get back to me and sign it. Another half hour meeting. So it's really only about an hour of of office time. And then writing it up for them, so you think about it, and then you stick it in a drawer for five years. You know, you mm -hmm. you you know your plan for it. it's peace of mind. It's an insurance policy you have in a drawer. You hope you never need it. You know you're going to need it eventually. But um, and then you know, and then as life changes, you know, you have children or or, or people pass away that are in your will, or if you want to add people to it, or you acquire different assets, that's really when you need to come back and revisit it. But hopefully, you put it in a drawer. You don't need to look at it for five or seven years. Right. Yeah, you're exactly right. That circumstances changes. You kind of revisit that. Yeah. Um, you know, you know what? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say one of the big circumstances that's changing right now, where I anticipate the change is, is with the change in presidents is, is that uh, Trump had very high limits on, uh, you know, what triggered uh, federal estate tax. It was 11.3. It might be 11.4 million right now that you didn't have to plan for uh, for federal estate tax. Joe Biden's threatened to, um, and I'm not trying to get political, I don't care which side you're on, but he's threatened to, to reduce those numbers back to pre-2018 levels to uh, 5 million or less. And at 11 million, or it, it just doubled if you're married, it's actually 23 million. Um, uh, not to 11 doubled, it's, it's like 11.5, so double that's 23. So you didn't have to do any federal or state planning at all above those, unless you had more than that. Um, and not many clients, you know, that's like 1% of the population, I think is what they, what they figure. Um, Joe Biden's threatening to take it back to 5 million per person and actually lower than that. Uh, so we're, we're all kind of waiting right now. Do we have to start calling clients that fit those thresholds and say, Hey, I know I told you five or seven years, but circumstances changed. The law changed. So yeah, so that's one. Another trigger is, you know, pay attention to the laws of Pennsylvania and, and the federal government to, to see what happens. 
And this is why you hire an expert, folks. Exactly. <laughs> this, is why, with, yep. this is this is this is why you do it. Um, you know what I found interesting, kind of, um, you know, just from your reputation and running through the website. Mm -hmm. I think our companies run um, very similar in the same regard as far as culture is concerned. You know, you're you're um, large enough where you have a lot of options for your clients, um, but you're also small enough where you have that really um, personal touch to all of your conversations. Can you speak a little bit about that and how you guys kind of sustain that sure. over the past 40 that's, years? That's hundred percent how we explain ourselves is that the, you know, we're, we're big enough to have different attorneys that can specialize in these different areas. If you ask one attorney, I'll just, it's a word of warning. If you talk to one attorney and he says he specializes, he or she specializes in all these areas, I, I wouldn't trust him because I could tell you, you can't know the law in every area that, that we practice. Just one person can't know it all. You can dabble in it, but you're not going to know as much as somebody who specializes mm -hmm. in it. So that's really how we look at ourselves is that um, we want to kind of have that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, relationship with one attorney, but then I want to be the guy that comes to your mind that if you need help in any legal area, you can call me and I can hook you up with somebody else at the law firm to take care of you. It's also why we, we wanted to push West. We saw our practice moving west in in the county so that's why we wanted to open the offices in boyertown and in pottstown um my theory there is that i want to make it as easy as possible for you to come meet me i don't want to have somebody from possible and have to drive 45 minutes to lansdale i want to be here and if if i same thing if i'm here every day but somebody in lansdale wants to meet me i drive over there and just and just meet them there and, and practice law there that day so um we we try and take a real pro client approach uh, to make their life easy, you know, uh, to, to use us. Absolutely. So, so tell me how you got involved with law. What was your thought yeah. process? Um, where'd you go to school? And so, yeah, so, uh, so again, I grew up in Lancaster County. I was a farm boy from Lancaster County. Um, so there was really only one college to go to, which was Penn state at the time. So uh, late eighties went to Penn state, uh, and then, uh, graduated in 91. Uh, there really weren't any jobs available. So that's one reason, but I was already taking the, the pre-law courses and business law courses and things like that. So so uh, I went to Villanova Law, which brought me to Montgomery County. Um, and then, so I've stayed here since then. So graduated in 95, started practicing in uh, in Norristown at that time, and then uh, joined the Shell Bartle in 98, I believe. So I have been with them. Uh, so for 23 years, I've been with them. Nice. So, uh, yes. And, and, and uh, between college and law school, I worked for a law firm in Lancaster County in their real estate department. So I focused my practice on real estate really since law school. OK. What do you like to do in your spare time? You have family? Yeah, I have a wonderful wife, Chris, um, uh, three kids, uh, two girls, uh, both who play uh, field hockey in college, one at Ursinus, uh, one at Temple. Uh, and then a son at Methacton. Uh, so I live in the Eagleville Audubon area. So uh, son at the Methacton. Uh, in the spare time, I like to golf, read. Uh, my uh, family, we've actually took it upon ourselves uh, years ago to try and hit every national park. So we do a lot of hiking. We've probably been, the number of national parks changes. They keep adding them every year. So I think they're up to, to 63. We've hit about 21 of them. So we're about one third of the way. But if they keep adding to it, we'll never catch up. So um, and then, uh, this year we actually, my wife and I are going to try and, uh, raise bees. So try and produce our own honey. Yeah. So yeah, that's, you that's should, a new venture we're just starting out on. Yeah. You should talk with uh, Melissa over at the chamber. She's oh, also a beekeeper, Melissa awesome. Shameline. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll write that down. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So two, two other questions, uh, yep. what's your golf handicap? Uh, probably a 14. So uh -huh. not, I don't spend enough time on it. So <laughs> yeah, all right, it's still it's still yeah. pretty legit. Yep. And uh, you and I share a love of the national parks. Um, yeah. I've been to quite a few as well. Yeah. I do nature and landscape photography. Oh, wow. uh, so I've been to 18, 19 of them so far. Yeah. Um, yep. What's your favorite one? What do you think you? So, that, so I, don't, I don't know if I have a favorite one. Acadia is great. Absolutely love Acadia. Um, yeah. uh, but then also um, Yosemite, love that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Arches. So mm -hmm. those three are probably the top three that uh, that we've been to. So yeah, have you been to? So Acadia is one of my favorites, yeah. our favorites. Yeah. My yeah. wife and I, um, we've been there six or seven times now. I think yeah. so. Yeah. We were actually we're going to go. So we're trying to plan the family vacation last year, and we're like, oh, we'll just head, we'll just drive. We can't fly anywhere. We'll drive up to Maine, and then we saw their COVID restrictions. So so we just actually we toured Pennsylvania, something we've always talked about doing. So we just did a lap around Pennsylvania, hitting 
parks and monuments and things like that too, which you know, I suggest everybody do because you know, joy. You always think about going afar. Enjoy what's here. You know, even yeah. past, you know, there's, there's a ton of it. Hit- it's great. So ton of history here um and then also just on the hiking side mm-hmm. you know i my wife and i discovered the natural lands uh the preserves yeah there's a system of properties uh, nearby here i think they're up to like 40 or 45 different properties That's amazing. Um, you know some smaller than others but you yeah. know it's an opportunity to get outdoors hike a little bit and just be out in nature so uh, I'm I'm helping. Helping. i actually have a client uh, over in chester county right now who we're helping to preserve a farm and convert it into a house so we keep some of that history uh, alive in the natural lands okay so, yeah yep yeah no that, that's great and i know i know we've partnered together in the past um with our bank and and your law firm and you guys have provided um great services to us um, so for those who are who are listening right now, how do they begin to reach out to you or in what circumstances do you think, you know, maybe throw a few out there that if somebody's thinking, I don't know if I need to reach out or have a conversation quite yet. Sure. So the, the, the easiest one that affects most people is the state planning. Just it's, it's any questions at all. And uh, yeah, and I pride myself in being a business lawyer, which I, so I take into account my clients finances as well as when I'm giving advice. And, and if it doesn't make sense to do something either state planning business wise, um, you know, I'll, I'll tell them not to do something. I've talked many a person out of transferring a piece of property to their children for legal reasons. And, and, it, and they walk away not owing me anything. And, and um, you know, but I give them the right advice tax wise. Yes. You know, it's losing money out of my pocket, but it's also saving money for them. And again, the hope there is that they come back, they trust me and come back to when, when a real issue comes up. But the other issues are, you know, if you're buying a house, selling a house, leasing, I, I handle that. If you're doing something that needs zoning approval, um, I, I help that. I can I can set you up with an engineer if you already have an engineer to draw things. Um, business wise, I represent a lot of businesses, and it, right now it seems like a lot of sole practitioners or you know sole proprietors are um, deciding whether they should open up LLCs or convert themselves to some type of corporate management. And I could talk them into the plus and minuses of, you know, an LLC or an S corp uh, tax wise and set up and, and just future costs and, and requirements for them. Um, so those are really the areas I focus on. But again, if any of the other areas pop up, which is the family law or litigation, um, you know, if you call the office right here in Potsdam and we'll have a, an attorney who handles that type of stuff, meet you here. Yeah, and I just want to just second or echo what you had said, Eric, about um, new businesses being formed. Yeah. You know, being in banking, I, I request documents all the time from businesses <laughs> who are yep. looking to start some banking with us or do some lending yep. um, without the proper uh, documentation. So, you know, I, I know, you know, look, there's a cost for your services, yep. um, you know, and, and as a business, that's, I think, one of the things you have to assume is that right. you're going to need legal representation or need somebody to do that. But yep. it's money well spent um, because, you know, there's opportunity or there's going to be situations where you're going to need to present that documentation and it's better yep. that it's in order. And, and it's, it's also better, better to do with me before they need you, too, because it's, it's nice to have a business for you guys at the banking level to see a business that's established, has 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 gotten some credit as, you know, even through credit cards or, or, you know, credit with other companies or something like that bills coming in the name of that company. It helps if you need a loan that you're an established business. So, you know, convert to that LLC. If you're, if you're thinking about doing it, you know, even just call and, and I'll, if it's not the right time, it's not the right time. And it's, and it's rather inexpensive to do. Um, but again, I think it helps in the long run if you start now and, and have a couple of years under your belt before you have to go to a bank. Yeah. Could not agree more. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Eric, what else would you like to share about yourself or the long firm before we go here? Um, that's probably it. Yeah, I think you're pretty pretty thorough uh, questioning me here. So just you know, we're here to help. And, and uh, even though I'm new to Pottstown, you know, I've only been here for two years. Um, yeah, I try and walk not in the current weather, but I try and walk the town and and use the restaurants and the businesses here and and to try and build these relationships. And I, that's why I appreciate you guys uh, being here, you and and Eileen. Uh, you know, just introducing you know, businesses to each other, because I think it's important that that we all get to know each other and all use each other in the area. Yeah, we, we totally agree too. And we're actually, um, you know, kind of going through a little bit of a thought process on how we might handle the spring a little bit when the weather warms up and um, maybe get us out of the studio a little bit. That's right. all. Yeah. So, <laughs> <Be nice. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. Greatly appreciate it. Um, Thanks, we're gonna, we're, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, just hang on for just a few moments. Okay. We're going to put Eric's contact information down in the comments. So if you would like to reach out to Eric, uh, you certainly can. We'll put the website there and also his email address. So 
Eric, thanks once again for joining us. We appreciate Great. it. Thanks. Take care. Folks, once again, thank you for joining this episode of Chamber Chat Live. I'm Bill Vitiello, the institutional and marketing manager for the Victory Bank. And we'd like to thank our 2021 mission and vision partners, our MVPs. Until we connect again, all my best. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, turn on notifications, subscribe or share. Want to be a guest? Email podcast at tricountyareachamber.com.